First things first, I've already washed my face with my Mario Badescu Enzyme Cleansing Gel. If you guys have not seen my skincare routine for your dry skin, I'll link that down below so you guys can kind of check out other products that I use for like a full on skincare routine. But this is the morning time, um, so all I need is that Enzyme Cleansing Gel. I don't need to get off all this makeup. Immediately afterwards, I put on my moisturizer and my favorite one is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Moisturizer. And this one's for all skin types, but this has been the best one for dry skin in the winter time for like daytime use. I definitely have some more potent, some thicker ones um, for the evening, but sometimes I don't wanna put on such a thick kind of moisturizer in the morning and then slather on all that makeup. So this has been the best thing ever. Then, kind of as I'm prepping my face, so what I'll do is um, right away I'll put on my Mario Badescu. This is a rose hip nourishing oil that I have been loving. So I kind of need to put on my moisturizer, do what I gotta do, do my hair, and then I'll take this rose hip nourishing oil. I'll take a couple drops and I will put that on my face. Um, double the moisture. If you have dry skin, you're gonna love this routine. It's gonna be the this is gonna make the biggest difference for how your foundation goes on in the winter time. And really kind of press that oil in and let it just melt in, especially the forehead. I try to concentrate on my really dry areas, my chin, my nose, around the nose where like the makeup likes to kick up. And the rest I'll just kind of, you know, pat around the face. And then um, I'll just kind of leave this on while I'm doing kind of like my eye makeup and everything. Just let give that a chance to sink in. So I've already done my eye makeup. And this is just like, you know, in between like gathering my items and picking out my makeup that I'm going to do and letting that sink in. So I give that a couple minutes. Now, aside from the rose hip oil as part of my pre-prep foundation a routine, something else that has really been making a huge difference, I feel like in the winter time for my foundation has has been the Mario Badescu facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. I'm telling you, like I open up my bathroom cabinet and my Mario Badescu collection has just grown. But I love not only the products, how natural they are, but they're also very affordable for like, I wouldn't consider them high-end skincare and I wouldn't consider them drugstore. Just like a couple dollars more, but still very affordable. You're not like, ugh, I'm paying $70 for this one. No, um, very, very affordable. So that's what I love. So I'll go ahead prior to my foundation and I'll spray my face and really get that extra hydration. This is something you can kind of carry around with you throughout the day, and if you need that extra hydration, you can also spray your face. And I honestly picked this up because I was watching um, Priscilla Ono, and she was doing, she'll do like kind of um, quick tutorials on models doing foundation routines or like just their whole face of makeup, and I love why, it's just so soothing watching. Um, I love the way she puts on foundation, but I saw that she actually did this step prior to foundation, and I was like, you know what? let me try that you know to kind of give them a little bit more of that luminous look and I was like I need that let's see and I feel like it's been making the biggest difference so if you don't follow Priscilla Ono on Instagram you totally should I feel like this has made a huge difference in my skincare routine plus I mentioned in my December favorites um, the rosehip oil and the facial spray was part of a kind of rose collection from Nordstrom for $20 and it also came with a rosehip mask and the rose water and witch hazel toner so I think this is a great steal but even if you kind of buy these products individually say you only want these two they're still very very affordable and Ulta even has these mini bottles of these sprays um, in their stores too so if you either want to test it out or just get like a mini one just start off and see if you love it you can do that I used to really pre prep my face with a spray such as the max fix plus but I've just the difference between these two and I feel like the difference when you try maybe different primers for dry skin they have hydrating primers and they have a very like luminous a glow a radiance primers and there's a difference I feel like my skin needs the hydration maybe but also needs the glow but I feel like you can't get the glow without the hydration type of a thing so I would say use both but if I had to choose one I'm gonna go with hydration because that's ultimately what's going to make my skin look the best um, but both it's like a great combination so I'll show you where I kind of use this max fix plus next within my foundation routine the biggest thing here is kind of patience 
ingredients and letting every single product sink in before you kind of go on to the next. So for me, I don't always have patience, but I do like to kind of multitask. So in between, you know, putting on these products, letting them prep, I'll do like my eye makeup, I'll do um, my eyeliner, I'll do eyebrows, I'll do something different so that, you know, I'm not wasting that much time. But if you just want to chill, let this kind of sink in, feel free to do so. So while I waited for that facial spray and the oil to sink in, I did my brows and now I'm going to go ahead and take my Laura Infallible Glow Lock Primer. I've got the hydration, so let's go ahead and take in the primer. And if you guys don't know, this is definitely my favorite for dry skin. I've got to try other ones I know, but I have been loving this one. If a new like glow primer comes out, I'm definitely, I'll try it. And let's see if it can replace my L'Oreal one. But I'm going to go ahead, press that. I like to press that around the nose. And this one just feels so good on the skin. And the only thing, make sure you get around the brows. Press that into the face. And then while we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and get started on my wing liner while we let that sink into the face. All right, so I've let that primer sink into my face and now I'm gonna go in with my foundation or foundations. Normally, I'll just go in with the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth Foundation. This is like the dewiest foundation I have, but, because I like to experiment, I like to mix it up. One of the ones that I've been loving kind of mixing it with just like a little bit is my favorite Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation. So just a little bit of the Milani for that extra coverage and it does have that great luminosity. And then just some of the Maybelline foundation and I'm actually running out of my Milani so I was like ah but I am scraping through so I'm just gonna have to buy another backup and I'll probably run out of the Maybelline soon but for the winter time I have been loving the Maybelline foundation so just grabbing a little bit and mixing those two together and I'm just gonna dot that around my face I'll go in one layer and then I'll go in with another for that extra boost of luminosity, I will take my Beauty Blender, your makeup sponge. I also really love the Morphe sponge, very affordable, but I just happened to clean this one first. And then the Max Fix Plus. You can also use the Pixie Glow Mist, my other favorite affordable option, but the Max Fix Plus a little bit goes a long way. So, or if you like to, you know, douse it around like me, kind of pat in the back of my hand and then begin blending around my face. And you really want to kind of blend it in, press it in really let it sink in but these two foundations blend out so easily you don't have to do both together i'm just being extra but it's just what i've been loving doing so far i love the milani i feel like it's really really great coverage and super luminous um but i wanted to extra luminosity and i love the maybelline but i was like maybe a little bit more coverage i can totally go in with two layers but I just wanted to see them together. The other combo I loved doing prior to this was the milani and the um l'oreal uh, True Match Lumi, also another great. It just gives it a little extra oomph, a little extra boost. Now I'm just going to go in and take my L'Oreal Full Wear Concealer that I've been using and loving. I did a full review and demo on this if you guys are interested. But I'm just going to go ahead and take that underneath my eyes, down the bridge of my nose, chin, and then I'll just kind of drag the rest down. A little bit goes a long way with this concealer, so I'll go ahead and blend that out with my Beauty Blender. Highlight around my face. And even though this concealer is a matte, I think it still melts in really, really nicely with the rest of the products. So, and if you notice, I kind of started the concealer a little bit lower than like right underneath my eyes. Um, just because this is definitely a thicker consistency and you know just so we can avoid creasing underneath the eyes by putting all that product in that sensitive area. But it blends out really really easily as you can see a little bit goes a long way. To set that concealer I'm going to take my Wet n Wild Highlight and Contour Palette and I'm going to take a little bit of the highlighting side on a Real Techniques setting brush favorite brush and this is the um, Wet n Wild Dulce de Leche shade so right before I go in I'll kind of have that prepped on my brush and then once more whatever concealer I'm using just because I crease really easily I'll just go one more kind of blending in and then go ahead keep my eye open <laughs> and set it the weirder the face the less likely you'll crease <laughs> just pat that in 
Once again, I'm gonna go in one more time just to blend through. Make sure we don't have any creasing and I already got my brush loaded with my under eye setting powder. And we're just gonna go ahead and set that under eye. I like that it kind of helps brighten a little bit too. So normally around this time, if I didn't already do my brows, I usually do my brows now and then liner. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is pop on my lashes. And this is to kind of give my foundation an opportunity to kind of set and sink into my skin before I go in with powder and the rest of the items. Very, very important. Patience, try to multitask, do some other things in between. So you just let everything just kind of sink in. So I'll pop on my lashes and I'll be right back. Lashes are are on so now time for powder so I'll mix it up sometimes I'll just go in with my dual fiber brush straight in with just a little bit of powder packing it in or I wanted to try combo from Makeup Geek and I know um, Jacqueline Hill so Makeup Geek did mention going in with like a sponge tapping into your powder and going with the sponge and then I remember Jacqueline Hill um, when she was doing like her makeup she mentioned going with the sponge but spraying it with well hers I think it was Tatcha spray but I was like girl I can't afford that so I'll go in with some of my Max Fix Plus and I think I saw um what's his name Angel Marino Mac Daddy do this as well so just kind of spray it and then I'll just kind of tap off a little bit in the back of my hand just kind of get that and then I'll go in with my favorite right now Galactic their luminous face powder and I have mine in the shade light so I'll just kind of tap it in there and then tap it around my face so still really get that nice glow and I don't need too much. And I like this one. It's really, really light. It's more for um, just a, like a nice little shot of luminosity as opposed to coverage. Um, but if you want coverage, I would definitely say maybe try a different powder. <laughs> I've already got the coverage locked down with my foundation mixture. A little cocktail. So, ooh just sets it beautifully but if you're gonna do this with a sponge I would definitely say make sure the powder is a very well close match to your skin tone because you're really pressing it in and it's kind of making it more prominent a little bit more pigmented so you know sometimes when you're like oh this is too light or a little bit too dark you'll see it when you kind of press it in as opposed to when you dust it on Next, I'll just kind of go in with my contour, my blush, uh, highlight, of course, and then I'll show you at the end how we all lock it in. So I'm just going to go back in with the Wet n Wild Highlight and Contour Duo, and this is a Morphe M530 brush that I've really been liking, and I'm just going to go ahead and add my contour. You can use an angled brush as well. But I've really been liking this one. Really want to make sure you get as close to the hairline as possible so you can't see like a war a white demarcation line. But and I just like to kind of cup the cheek. Go a little bit higher than where you think your cheekbones are, or if me, you can't find them. <laughs> Create your own cheekbones just to kind of add some dimension around the face and around the hairline. I try to pull my hair back. Maybe I want to get like a little bandana or something to just kind of make sure I don't get it into my hair. I don't know. Is it just me or I get really bothered um, when chicks are doing like tutorials and especially when they do face products and they got this big hoop earrings where they got their face framed around or the hair framed around their face. Like I get it. You want to look cute, but then it's like, you know, you're getting your, ugh, it's just all over your face. Now just pull it back. It's okay. You don't look cute while you're doing your makeup. Sometimes it's all right, you know. We all know the finished result will be great. It just bothers me. I'm like, oh my God, get the hair out of your face. <laughs> my final step I like to do for my contour, just take a little bit of that highlighting powder. Just gonna place that underneath just to kind of clean up that contour. Make it a little bit more sharp. And you can do this with the loose setting powder too, but if this is right here, I'll just go ahead and use that. Then I'm just gonna go in and take my Flower Beauty Flower Pots blush and my Up and Up from Target blush brush. I love this brush for blush and even for bronzer too. Just gonna add that to my cheekbones. And this is in the shade Peach Prima Rose. If you haven't heard me talk about it, I'm gonna go in and just wipe off that powder underneath and then just mix my blush and my bronzer and everything together. And this just kind of blends it out and keeps it from looking like a harsh, harsh line. You wanna be chiseled, but not harsh. 
For my highlights, use the highlighter of your choice, but the one I've been loving is the Viva Cosmetics Loose and Glow Highlighter Duo. And I like to take mine in the shade Reina, which is the lighter shade, but they do have a darker shade um, for those of you who are more tan, or even if you want to do like a blush topper maybe even. And I'm going to take my Morphe M510 brush. Ooh, the highlight though. Ooh, beautiful. Next, I would suggest put on your mascara prior to spraying your face, like definitely give it a couple minutes before you spray your face or spray your face and then put on your mascara because that'll just, you know, eliminate a lot of mascara everywhere. So I'm actually going to put on my mascara right now and I'm actually going to change and then I'll come back and I'll finish off my face. Got my lipstick on, let my mascara dry. I actually went in with the Milani, their new matte satin lipsticks in the shade Classic. It is that classic Amavi nude shade. Check out that video down below for some more lip swatches. But now I'll go in with two different sprays. I'll go in with my Max Fix Plus, And this is really to help more so to help your face look a little bit less powdery. Smooth finish. Give you that glow. This isn't a makeup setting spray. This is that extra boost of luminosity. And then I'll show you my setting spray. So I'll spray this. Usually, because I like to look extra luminous, I'll go in with one layer. Let it kind of die down a little bit, then go in with another layer. So, away from your face. Don't go too close because you're just going to get dripping water. and It's going to make your makeup drip off your face. So, kind of go in with one layer, trying to get everywhere around the face because it's easily, especially I feel like, to miss maybe the middle. Let that kind of sink in, and then we'll go in with another. If you don't want to look as luminous as I do, but I also have dry skin, so I want to go in with that extra layer. If you have oily skin, you either maybe don't even need the Max Fix Plus. If you want just like a nice little boost, use less than I do, but you don't need two layers like I do. And or if you're not extra like me, you don't need two layers like I do. But I'll go back in. And do another layer and sometimes what I'll even go in and do is maybe like press in just ever so lightly where I did highlights and just around my face and to really press that product in but this is where we really start to come together if you're like doing your makeup in between like girl I don't know what you're talking about it's a process trust the process um, but you'll really notice a difference I feel like with this kind of extra little added steps throughout the day when you kind of do a check-in next to set my makeup because this makes the huge difference I'm gonna go in with my favorite Milani and make it last a setting spray and this is gonna help lock everything in and really help extend the longevity of your makeup so once again and then we let that sink in much better now my face looks more luminous it looks smoother I don't look like I have all this powder on my face so for those of you who love makeup who love to layer on like me but you don't want to look like a powdery mess because you do have dry skin dry skin you can totally still use powders but I think these steps just really help it lock it in and really just give you that nice smooth finish so I hope you guys enjoyed this foundation routine for the winter time totally use it all year long if you want to as well look extra luminous maybe you know dial it down a bit on certain steps or whatever I'm definitely looking forward to trying this on you know maybe months and seasons where it's not as crazy cold here like it is in Chicago like 30 20 degrees but this has been helping me still you know wanting to wear the makeup and making it look good during the winter season so let me know if you guys try this if you pick up any of these products and if they make a difference for you as well I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it really helped those of you with dry skin especially Especially if you have been struggling this winter time because I have been there where I'm just like what do I do what steps do I take to make my face not look cracked and dry even oily skin it can get a little bit drier normal skin this time of season depending where you're living let me know if this helps you guys once again thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to check out down below my skincare routine especially if you have dry skin or this can even help those of you who do not for this winter time thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.